cost me my life. Can't kill a dead man. At the end, of, and this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar, 28th verse. At the end of the 12th month, he was walking about the royal palace of Babylon. The king spoke saying, is not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty? Did you notice that God gave him a year to heed what Daniel had said so he didn't have to go through that? God knew. While the word was still in the king's mouth, a voice from, he from heaven, King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from you. And they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make you eat grass like oxen, and seven times shall pass over you, seven seasons, seven years, until you know that the Most High rules in, in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. That very hour the word was fulfilled concerning Nebuchadnezzar, he was driven from men and ate grass like oxen. His body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hair had grown like eagle's feathers and his nails like bird's claws. And at the end of the time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, this is his personal testimony, lifted my eyes to heaven and my understanding returned to me. And I bless the Most High, praised and honor him who lives forever. The man understood that there is no human being that is above God. He finally understands his place in the universe and God's place in the universe. And it is no longer an academic pursuit or debate like three Hebrew children, it is settled in his heart and in his mind. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. All of the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. He does according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. This is significant. He recognizes the sovereignty of God in everything that's happened to the kingdom, in his placement as king. He recognizes the sovereignty of God in everything that has happened in his life, that is happening in his life, and is going to happen in his life. God has become king in his life. If you're here this morning and your heart hurts over things that have happened to you in the past, I'm here to tell you, God saw it. He knew it. He knew you were coming because he had chosen you. If you're here today and you have trouble in your life, you don't know how things are going to work out. You're not sure what the plan ought to be. You just don't know. The same God that spoke this to a king who had everything holds you in his hand. And nothing can change it. No demon out of hell. No person on the earth. Now, do you remember what Nebuchadnezzar said at the beginning of this chapter to all the peoples of the earth? Peace be multiplied to you because when you come to the place where you recognize the absolute sovereignty of God over your life and your circumstances, when you come to the place where you own nothing and it all belongs to God, when you come to the place where your life has been surrendered to his will, no one can threaten you with death because it can only bring you into the presence of Almighty God. And when you have that firm focus in your life, 
I'll tell you what it did for me. It washed over me with a peace. Like Paul said, what can man do to me? Nothing. And it isn't contingent on if only I had. It's not where my peace is. It's not where any believer's peace is. It's knowing where we stand with an almighty, all-powerful, all-loving God. Back up the 35th verse. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. He does according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. No one can restrain his hand or say to him, what have you done? God had a discussion with Job. Because everybody in heaven and everybody in hell knew why Job was going through what he was. It's because God looked at him and trusted him. And his trust was evidenced by the terrible times that Job went through. It says at one point he was sitting in sackcloth and ashes, scraping the oozing sores. And his wife came to him and she looked at him said, Job, why don't you just curse God and die? The testimonies I've heard of so many men of God said, I could handle it when all the pressure was from outside. I could handle times where there was no money, times when I was overworked, times when the needs of the ministry they seemed like I didn't have enough hours. I didn't, I, there was, I didn't know how to meet it all. When people would come with prob problems and I wasn't Solomon, all I knew is what the scripture said and that's what I gave them. Things didn't really start to crack for me until my wife gave up on me too. Job went through that. And after all, being the only one seemingly in the crowd that didn't understand why things were happening the way they were, he finally questions God. And God's answer him to him wasn't, oh, Job, it's okay. Like a good father holding to true principles, he responded to Job. And he said, Job, where were you when I parted the dry land from the waters? Where were you when I created the behemoth and the Leviathan? In other words, you don't call me on the carpet. I call you. Job needed it. He'd been through a lot. But the truth of the matter is, if we ever lose sight of the fact that he is sovereign and we are created for his purpose and his pleasure, if we ever lose hope in the fact that he is a God of love and that whatever we find occurring in our lives, that we are never, never beyond the point of rescue. At the same time, my reason returned to me and the glory of my kingdom, it returned. My honor and splendor returned to me. My counselors and nobles resorted to me. Now you'd think after seven years of wandering around like an animal having lost his mind, eating grass, living out with dew on him under no roof, and he walks back in and he's praising God and it humbles those men and they immediately bend the knee to him as king. There was some testimony that man was given. That man was telling somebody about the Most High God and he didn't care who knew 
what had happened to him. He, this was all about God. It wasn't about what people thought about him. I was restored to my kingdom and excelled and, and, and excellent majesty was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol the honor of the king of heaven. The man now returns to the place where all things made him arrogant. And now facing all those things again, there's not room for anything in his heart but to look at his friend Daniel and to say, I know what it's like to say, it's not me, it's him. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all of whose works are truth and his ways justice. And those who walk in pride, he is able to put down. The man is grateful for everything he walked through that finally put him in the place where he had right relationship with God and for the first time in his life, peace. Now, as I told you, my personal testimony is on YouTube. And if you'd like to hear it, because it's fairly lengthy, I would encourage you to go there. And I would tell you what somebody said jokingly one time. If you knew what kind of fellow I was before I got saved, and it took a while for God to clean me up, he's still scrubbing my ears now and again. If you knew who I was, you probably wouldn't want to listen to me. And if I knew everything about you and who you were, I probably wouldn't want to talk to you. But fortunately, God has done a work in both our hearts. And none of us are under the illusion that we are changed or we are here of our own accord. It's by the hand of God. The more I remember where I come from, the less I have an interest in pointing a finger at other people. Mm -hmm. The church is supposed to be a hospital where people can come because they're sick in their spirit, like Nebuchadnezzar, like me, and just found a place where people were able to come around them and to love them, care about them. I am through. When God lays somebody on your heart, oh, for the love of God, Lift them up before God when they come to your mind. You have no idea what they may be going through. But if you believe the word of God, you do have an idea of how powerful your prayer is. Amen? Amen. So here's what we're going to do.